By a golden estuary in West Wales lies the community of Llanelli. It has a familiar story to tell. It once had a proud industrial past, but fell on hard times. Now its people are struggling to survive a recession. It's a tale you'll know from the headlines, but we'll show you the human stories behind them. Some are having their lives blighted by redundancy. That's it. End of an era. Listen, there's no money coming in, and today was a week before paid this, so we've got much money left. Totally numb. Just can't think straight. Others at the airport are striving to forge a more prosperous future. There's a big leave to hold counter, come on, it's a, it's a question of inward investment, that's all about. Some are living the good life whilst others are living no life at all. I'm determined to get off the drugs, but I just wish it didn't take my brother's death to wake up to a life, you know what I mean? There are people of opposites, of hope and despair, success and failure, and these are their stories. Spencer Davis Engineering is one of the few companies to survive Llanelli's industrial decline. During the recent recession, the company has had to lay off a third of its workforce. It's now facing closure. Uh, Managing just Director just Owen Davis has just returned from a short break straight into a crisis meeting with Production Director Martin Evans. Because obviously we haven't had a, a playback from him. We haven't had any new orders from no, them, no, no, nothing at all. No skid bases, no enclosures. Um, uh, I was hoping it'd come back from holidays and we'd have had a nice scheduling from a couple of customers. I could just chill and relax yeah. and not not get stressed to this lack of blinking work. Roy, the company driver, is loading up some metal casings for delivery, but he won't be taking them. Owain will. The consignment is for Godwin Pumps, Owain's biggest customer. This key client has been keeping Owain going, but lately the orders have been drying up. If you make a visit to a customer, you tend to get a lot more out of it than just talking on the phone or a couple of emails. We can sort of overcome any difficulties or problems. It's all about relationship in our business. Spencer Davis Engineering has been manufacturing a new casing for Godwin pumps. Owain's keen to see how they're selling, but more importantly, okay. if there's any more work. Cheers, Cliff. Bye. From a forecast point of view, you know what the business is like. We don't know right. okay. what I'm going to do over the next fortnight at times. Okay. It's, it's, right. Plus the fact it's, it's, it's new, because yeah. it's all... It's a variation on the theme, effectively. Yeah. OK. Um, the yard is full of Spencer Davis casings. If they're not being sold, then there's very little chance of any new work. We're all about trying to strive to be successful. And if you don't get any orders, then that's not success. Um, we're trying to be optimistic for the future, um, trying to put a positive slant on things, but the reality is we're not there yet. If things don't improve soon, the family firm of Spencer Davis Engineering will be on the point of collapse. It's a big day for Llanelli. Just outside the town at Force Lass, where there was once a huge open cast mine, the UK's first major race course for 80 years has just been built. Point reach way six, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. With the official opening ceremony still weeks away, the great and the good have arrived for a warm-up race meeting. For the council, it's a massive gamble. They're hoping that the race course will attract money and business opportunities. And it could be a lifeline for one particular business venture. Captain Winston Thomas leased Pembrey Airport 14 years ago from the council, and he's hoping to create Llanelli's first international airport.
but progress is slow. There go. And the council are getting impatient. That's the fire engine in place, so we can uh, do the rest of the checks now. Winston and his volunteer staff are hoping the launch of the new racecourse will bring planes, spectators, and revenue to the airport. We're expecting four or five, so we're hoping they'll turn up. So we will see. It's a big leap for the whole county of Command, which is a question of inward investment that it's all about. And, uh, you know, it's um, very important, you know, to to see other companies re relocating and building things in the area. You know, so. At the racecourse, Winston has a stall set up to promote his vision for Pembrae. To make this a reality, he believes the council need to invest in a bigger runway. However, for years they've resisted. This runway, when it's finished, will be 1,200 metres. That's the same size as London City Airport. And London City Airport is uh, flying the um, Airbus uh, 3, 318 uh, direct to New York. Uh, so the, the airport's got the capabilities doing it, but the infrastructure needs to be improved. Back at the airport, the volunteers are on full alert for incoming planes. Yes, uh, any uh, news of any aircraft coming in over? Hoping you might tell us. No, a negative this end. Uh, no, me. Thank you. Over. There you go. Nothing happening. All oh, quiet the whistle front, as they say. <laughs> At the race course, among the local punters are Owain Davis and his family. The track looks absolutely fantastic and the facility is amazing. The crowd, the atmosphere is electric. So, so tourism ledger is the way forward, you reckon? It's not engineering, anyway, I know that. Oh, they're away. Yeah, so. Uh, Quick. But Winston's stall attracts little interest. With the day drawing to a close, it's time to give up. You just pointed that the, 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 the many planes in there. Doesn't look like any planes arrived today. No, there have been planes there. A bit, all right. Yeah, yeah. How many? Yeah, yeah. About well, four or five, I think. Yeah. Despite Winston's impression, very few planes actually turn up. Pembrey International Airport may yet happen, but not today. It's time for a bit of light relief for a young group of recovering drug addicts and their support workers from Llanelli. We have a go there. Never driven a car before, so we have a go car to go instead, didn't it? They've been brought here by Alan Andrews. Alan's an ex-drug user who spent many years in prison and now runs Choose Life, a drop-in centre for drug users and alcoholics. Like many Welsh towns, Llanelli has a long-term drug problem and go-karting is part of Alan's programme to help drug users turn their lives around. It works really well because uh, it helps divert their attention, what their primary concern is, and that's heroin or alcohol, whatever. Too much bumping, so we had to send him in a bit late, give him a bit of advice, and then he'll come back out then on the circuit. Only a bit of a warning, that's all. Yeah, they are doing well. It's sticking the basic boundaries that they've just been told. They probably never listen to teachers, never listen to police officers, never listen to probation officers, but yet they're listening and they're sticking to what they were told. And it's just small steps. People want these big steps. It's not going to happen. They're all little steps. Small choices, daily choices for permanent change.
At Spencer Davis Engineering, it's been a couple of months since Owen Davis was out drumming up new orders, and the factory floor is worryingly quiet. Spencer Davis Engineering is uh, insolvent, and we've had to um, cease trading today. So that's what's happened today. Waiting in an upstairs office are Owain and a small personnel team. <coughs> one by one, the workers are called up to be talked through their redundancy. We've got no job. Simple as that. I said, I've seen it go quiet a few times, but it's always managed to pick up and didn't expect this. Told my wife. I'm like, yeah. She just lost her job as well. So, in shit street. <laughs> Basically. What little savings we got, I'm gonna pay the mortgage for this month. What we're we gonna do next month, I don't know. As the company he founded 35 years ago is dismantled, Owain's father, Spencer Davis, has come in to help tie up some loose ends. It's been a hard six months, certainly with the recession. Very difficult. So, it is a, a sad day. I can't fault Spencer and Owain. They, they've been really good tonight. It's, uh, it's always been like a family, little community. Like, It'd be nice to know what this is. It's like destroyed a family. Ah. It really has destroyed a family. <laughs> Darren, ready for you next week. It's a sad end for yet another family run firm in Llanelli. But the world of business is littered with comebacks. Could Spencer Davis Engineering be one of them? Since the close of the traditional manufacturing industries, the town's drug problem has grown into an epidemic. On average, there's a drug-related death in Llanelli once every month. At a cafe near Chew's Life, Alan Andrews' friend Neil Vaughan is trying to help his son Jamie kick his drug habit. Always go back to it, but I've been back to it a few times, and this time, the reason why I want. Jamie's to... elder brother Lee recently died of a heroin overdose, and Neil's anxious that Jamie doesn't go the same way. I mean, I said, like, I'm going to change, and I'm going to get off everything, which I am. When I speak to you, yeah, you've got to realise that by you just hearing your voice, I know if you've taken something, but you don't think that you... way. I don't think you can tell every time. No, because if I'm actually tired, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there is a difference in your voice when you take the Hello? I suppose a lot of people, myself included, don't want to admit that you've got a drug addict as a child. Yeah? You know, because there is that stigma about it. Right. I have found out a lot more about misuse of drugs since Leah's died than beforehand, and I should really... I, I'm ashamed of that, like... I want to come off for myself, because I want to have a life for those, right? But I just wish I didn't take my brother's death away to a life, you know what I mean? If Neil's ever going to help Jamie, he needs expert advice from Alan at Choose Life. Post last race course. It's only the local people. Meryl Gravel, leader of Carmarthenshire County Council, is addressing a business function. Llanelli's drug problems, factory closures, and unemployment all fall within her remit. We are trying to better their lives. And when Edrichman, he glued her best into mass or heavy, I was saying, we could have done it every year. You were inspiring. Today she's leaving early. Meryl doesn't want to miss one of the most important local events. The French company Talis has taken over an old MOD site and set up a new production line upgrading military vehicles. 
yeah, yeah. This is Wayne Priest now from from Talis, this international French company. He's good looking as well. Yeah, all right, how are you doing? Good to see you. Pretty good, thanks. It's taken many months of behind-the-scenes negotiations for the council to bring the factory to Llanelli. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah I'm really the, delighted. Uh, it's being opened by the now former First Minister, Rodri Morgan. One of the factory's newest recruits is Darren Shepherd. Darren was laid off from Spencer Davis Engineering. In the current climate, his future looked bleak until Talis started recruiting. Um, Thank you. Isn't this fantastic? Yes, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely oh, brilliant. Great. Are you married? Yes, yeah, so I'm married to very poor. Oh, to very poor. Yeah, two okay. children. Two children. Oh, good. Yeah. So they're pleased that Dad's in work. Oh, yeah. Better choice for Christmas. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. No, yeah. it's good. Great, Dad. Yeah, That's fantastic. Very much. Yeah. Good. 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 It's a great PR opportunity that Merrill quickly takes advantage of. This gentleman was made redundant in one of our companies in yes. very poor. And now, because of the work of the county council ensuring purchasing this place, he's now employed. Isn't That's that wonderful? Isn't it? That's great. That's what it's all about, isn't it? That's fantastic. Just a little bit, yeah? <laughs> It'll go on from acquiring a small number of jobs now in the beginning to hopefully a hun creating hundreds of jobs in the future. I'm actually quite excited to happen because of the quality of the facilities that we have on the site. A military helicopter is making an unscheduled touchdown at Pembrey. By attracting more of the MOD's refuelling business, Winston is slowly managing to increase his turnover. It's an emergency refuelling of a seeking aircraft. It's on active service and they got into a fuel shortage. Spencer Davis is manning the pumps. When he's not working at his own engineering company, he volunteers at Pembrey. Spencer's a keen amateur pilot and keeps his plane at Pembrey. He's keen to see the airport become a financial success and is a passionate believer in Llanelli's tourist potential. Certainly in the last uh, five or six years, there's been huge developments just under us here, the new Machanis Golf Club, for example, and there's a big housing estate going alongside the, the golf club. And uh, it's a very, very popular area to live as well. Uh, and a very pleasant area uh, to live. Another recent development was uh, the Burryport Marina, which we can see underneath us here this, at the moment. Uh, again, it's bringing a lot of... Uh, obviously, coming up on our right, the Kevin Sheedan Beach, which is uh, approximately seven miles long, a fabulous beach. It's become very, very popular with the uh, Pembrey Country Park adjacent to it. Neil Vaughan and his wife Cheryl have been meeting up with Alan Andrews from Choose Life in the hope of understanding more about Jamie's addiction. Yeah, man. I just don't know what to say. And I don't know what the solution is. I really, really don't. You can just try and give as much help as you can. And I just feel I can't give him any money to help him because I don't know where it's gonna where it's gonna go. I think if I give him money, they won't commit crime and you know, if I give them money, they, they're safe and, you know, we had one girl down with us. Within three weeks of her parents saying, no money, sorry, you're not coming in the house and that's it. She's gone to rehab. You know, three weeks, and this has gone on for year in, year out. It's almost the addiction has to have, take its effect on an individual. Then they say, no, I want help. Then you can work with them. Every week, Alan takes a group of recovering addicts from Choose Life to a local sports centre. This time he's managed to get Jamie along. It's all part of Choose Life's diversionary activities. Jamie's father, Neil, has taken time off work to come and watch. Keep your fit. I'm a people I play with I love. Simple as. 
Yeah, you've done a lot to me, you wouldn't believe. His addiction to drugs has recently got Anthony Thomas into trouble with the law, but Chu's life is trying to help him turn his life around. When I first turned up, yes, I had squared nothing. I didn't eat, that's all I had was the clothes on my back. I got a full wardrobe now. I mean, thanks to these lads. Instead of taking heroin, Jamie's now on methadone, a prescribed heroin substitute. It's a positive first step. Yeah, great to see Jamie. Yeah. And everything he's been through the last yeah. last year yeah. or so. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Um, football is a, a passion of his, so to see him coming down and kicking Not about is brilliant. And it's like, you know, coming along, having a game of football, most of them will go home knackered. You know, as for going out scoring tonight, I don't know how far they'll get from their three piece or whatever. <laughs> just, just small changes, you know, but, uh, you know, brilliant. <laughs> Keep it warm, she went. I've emptied the pockets, right? Nah, right? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> At the site of what was Spencer Davis Engineering, Owain and Spencer have come in to tie up a loose end. Right, towards the bulkhead. We're just getting uh, clearing these rugby posts out because they were on half before uh, all the commotion last week. So it's things that we've uh, we've still got to do, you know. Keep everybody out of the way. And they're not just any rugby posts. These used to stand in the hallowed Straddy Park, former home to Llanelli and the Scarlets. They've been restored, and Owen and Spencer want to return them to the town before the curtain finally falls on their company. These are the ones that the all blacks Nine lost. three were scored on these posts. Plan is to erect them on a roundabout in Tenetli within the area of the new Scarlets, Park of Scarlets. And obviously we've got some new saucepans and they're ready to go up in the roundabout. Despite their collapse, Owen and Spencer's loyal customers are still keen to work with them, and there's now talk that the business might be able to emerge in a new form. But from my perspective, I'm trying to be positive. Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Well, I'm trying to think, well, it's still half full. You know, I'm 38 years of age, I can't sit down, I've got to get on with it, and I'm probably unemployable, so I've got to do something myself. Um, and thankfully, with other business interests, we can pull them all together and we can uh, make a living and hopefully re-employ some more people. At Pembrey Airport, Winston has temporarily closed the runway for repairs. But there are bigger problems for Winston to fix. He wants to develop the airport, but the runway isn't long enough for the big planes he's hoping to attract. Ideally, we'd like to have the HS-146, which uh, carries about 80 odd passengers and can fly direct to, uh, to Europe. The extension will have to be done to operate that type of aircraft off this airport. Winston claims the council's failure to remove a fence at the end of the runway and fund an extension has cost him millions in lost revenue. In Llanelli Town Hall, Merrill Gravel's chairing a meeting about the airport's future. As a local businessman and volunteer at Pembrey, Spencer's also been invited. And the real customers that I spoke to have a genuine interest in using the airport if it can meet their needs. And its needs are not so much a large, expensive runway extension, but services and facilities that they can use. With the fuel, for example, I would say that the majority of people stay away from Pembrey purely because there's no credit card facilities for fuel. Yeah. For him, it's not a good time to tell him what to do because he's now making a bit of money. I now, we say. can see, obviously, now, you know, the, the, yeah. you know, the potential, but so can he. I found it difficult to work with him um, uh, because he is highly resistant to change. If you, as Commander County Council, want to develop the airport for investment, then I'll, I'll be straight, make the recommendation that should not be with Winston as an operator. I would say this needs fresh blood. Winston believes the council don't fully understand the technical demands of running an airport. Uh, today, because of the wind is basically uh, northwesterly, then we'll be using runway 22 for landing. 
Winston says he has already recognised the need for a new management structure and is committed to change. The council claim that Winston's fence dispute is not their responsibility and despite attempts to mediate, they fail to broker an agreement. It's a special day for Jamie Vaughan. He's beaten a personal record by managing to stay out of prison for a whole year. Yeah, because like I've done well really to stay out this long, like and I haven't committed one offence. So I'm kicking on strong. At a tattoo parlour in Swansea, Jamie's father Neil has come to get the final touches on the tattoo of his dead son Lee. Probably. Realising he's still costing me money and inflicting pain on me. <laughs> yeah. Since his brother's death over four months ago, Jamie's now started to plan for the future and is managing to stay off heroin. I'm on a script prescription now and I'm doing really well on it, so... Like I said, like, in my brother's own room, like, in my speech, I, I'm going to try my hardest to come off everything and I'm doing it, so, yeah. It's going to be a long road. I, I don't expect it to be, uh, oh, this time in six months, if you came back and I was speaking to you, but my son Jamie has made a, a miraculous recovery because I don't think it will be like that and a lot of these youngsters are going to be fighting it for the rest of their lives, probably, you know. Hopefully I get a job, my girlfriend will be a qualified hairdresser, so we'll be bringing some money in. I should be having, uh, well, I, well, I'm not too sure. Uh, hopefully I'll get a job, you know, and uh, hopefully we can put a deposit on the house and all for us, like, and just be normal, basically, a normal couple, like, with a, and hopefully start a family. Next time, the recession still biting. Well, start a new beginning. But is a business makeover enough to refloat Owen and Spencer's business? There we are, I can now officially hand you hand over to the younger <laughs> generation. There it is. <laughs> With a grand opening of four slash racecourse, Winston finally gets some punters flying in. But is it enough to impress the council? Good, good. And Alan has some rather novel activities for his recovering addicts. There's nothing wrong with a kick in now and again, boys. It uh, brightens your horizons. Yes. 